sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out Well hello, good evening and welcome to the show. You join us at a very strange point in chat and although I have chat available to put up on screen I'm not going to. Let's just say we're talking about Norwegian ladies gardening. I'm not going to take it any further than that. It's probably not wise to, is it? Keith? I don't think so. No. I just, but before I go there, I just want you to have a look <coughs> at smile on Keith's face when I mention Norwegian ladies gardening. I'm trying not to smile. <laughs> <laughs> and failing miserably, yep. it has to be said. Yeah. Um, today is Thursday, the 28th of November the day after the 27th of November, which was quite an eventful day, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Um, and to be honest, the show is going to be almost completely off the cuff, because I am almost completely <laughs> off me heed. It's about right, isn't it? Knackered. Was Pardon? That the, wasn't that the word, knackered? Knackered, curry packet. Word. Yes, indeed it was. In, in, indeed that is the word but never mind it will be a good show it'll be a fabulous show um, we've had a couple of very busy days and it's all been good but I do have um, a care fun to recoil and rewick and I've kind of done a one I made earlier sort of thing just to get it started um, because my fingers are trembling something chronic um, but we'll talk about that in the main part of the show shall we do the show yes shall we do the show producer Mrs Woman Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's do it. This is all together on three. One, two, three. The, the Hayes Hour. Hour. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> the Hayes Hour. That's what she said. Hello, good evening, we're back. Yes, the titles have played out. Keith and Kat and I are here to entertain. Now, before we go any further, I want to say a great big thank you to everybody that has tuned in and watched the show from last night. We've had record numbers going there. Um, and I want to thank everybody that came along and watched it live. Uh, I'll freely admit I was slightly trembling at the start of the show, but my God, I enjoyed it. Did you, Chris? It was fantastic. I enjoyed every minute of it. Now, I know Keith was saying before the show what happened, so shall we tell you? Cause yes. Yes. I haven't seen it yet. No, not yet. Um, Chris Choi from, from, from The Tonight Show on ITV came along. And, well, I'll let Chris tell you, because she tells it better than I do, I think. And anyway, I don't want to... I need a snooze. Go on, Chris. OK, I'll set the alarm, please. <laughs> Thank you. If I start snoring, yeah. wake us up. Yeah, we will, don't worry before you wake everybody else up. Um, it was fabulous because we had Chris Joy and the team, which were sound engineer, um, cameraman, and I believe his producer. Yep. Which all had to get into your little studio there, and did successfully. <laughs> Have they all gone in here? We were very friendly, Keith. Very God, friendly. Blind me. <laughs> and... It was relaxing at first, <laughs> and then Chris got into his stride and started throwing all the questions um, that we've actually wanted to be thrown at us uh, for a long time. The questions that we hoped Linda McCavan, Anna Subri, Jeremy Mean, all these people would have thrown at us and never have. <clears throat> and Dave answered every one of them 
and not just answered, he calmly and cool, coolly, that's the right word, dealt with every single one. And it was just wonderful to watch. It, it, it ran over by, what, 17, 20 minutes, wasn't it, Dave? 27 minutes and three seconds, Chris. 27 minutes. And I, I couldn't even leave to go to the loo. It was so good. And Mark Shaw's dogs had a, had their legs crossed. Nobody would leave it. <laughs> I've got to see it as well. I, I do. I have got to see it. Um, John Diver and uh, Lorian, the pair of them were, were brilliant, mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. And I have to say, it has had an effect. Now, during the course of today, um, Chris and his team, Chris Choi, that is, and his team, went up to see Professor. Gerard Hastings, I am tired and I apologise, I had to think there. And you know last night during the course of the show, Chris, when he was on about uh, are they safe, are they safe, are they safe, today yes. Professor Hastings told him they are safe. This is a Sterling. The guy. Sterling Professor, yes. <coughs> Gerard Hastings apparently is more worried about how they're being marketed, which is, that's fine and we've covered that to some degree as well. But that was what he told us when we went for the mini meet. And how many was there at the mini meet? Well, this is an easy way to find out. Sav took some photos and also did some cracking video. Um, photos like, for instance, um, oh, yes, well done, David. You haven't connected the right machine up, have you? I'll do that after we come back from the break then. I am such an idiot. Because I was, I was editing video up until 25 minutes ago. Yes. It, it, I was going to say, because we haven't been back all that long, no. so you've done well. So I've, I've, what I've done is I've cobbled together 16 minutes of video that was shot. Now, I'm going to play it in so you can see what went on. But there was a gaggle of us there, a whole host, and they all introduced themselves at the beginning anyway, so that's all good. Um, and it'll give you some idea of what went on. Here it is. Now, the sound is up and down like a bride's nighty. <laughs> Try and listen through it. That's the best I can say. Have a watch at this. <laughs> you have been at all. Um, and, and we've got um, Tony the camera, Martin the sound man, it, it's Sally, so it's just, she must be very, yeah. So, uh, David, you're not going to be part of this then, is that right? You're going to be, you're not, you're not going to be part of this. I think we saw enough of my ugly mug last night, didn't you? It's up here. Our Sam. Um, do you think that David should be part of the group? Oh, yeah, this part of the yeah. Yeah. It's a way of seeing it in David's you know, in his own life as well as just the yeah. 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 All right. So, you mind if I take one? Cliff. And this, as I was saying earlier about it, I was really um, explaining it. Right. So the idea of this is that elsewhere in the documentary we're talking a lot about policy and the regulation and medicine and everything about it. 
so what there's a risk of what will be lost from it is human touch about yeah. people's human stories about why you're doing it and your personal story. So what I would ask you, and really it's the same for everybody, is you know, why why are you on these things now and you know, what difference does it make? So Cliff, then we've got Martin. And then the same question to you. I mean, I'm assuming when the context of this conversation is that you, you all think they're uh, do you think they're absolutely safe? They're just safer. Yeah. Safer. 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 Safer or safe enough? Is it worth talking to you then? Uh, there's a long suffering. Different twist on it. So, what would you say? What's your, what's your story then of the. Uh, okay. You're in. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah. And you, you, you got to your eyes on Alien. It's wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so there'll be no trick questions because I'm going to ask you all the same to tell me your story. And the only thing I'll do is if you kind of dry up or anything, I'll just ask you questions. Those are my daily. Can we get Mike? No. <laughs> no fluffers. I'm in HD. You're all fine. Um, so, where are we coming? I'm coming in. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just sit down. Yeah. And then just straight to the chat. Should we go straight in, more or less? Sit down well, just sit down and then you get the wide. Yeah. Yeah. We'll start chatting. Yeah. And we'll once we're the established, then we'll start chatting. Moving in, yeah. <laughs> one, one at a time. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Fancy seeing you here. No idea I didn't have such a thing. Uh, anyway, um, that's a very interesting shot, isn't it? And I'm sure that that in itself will probably get a BAFTA. Uh, <laughs> best entrance to a public house, 2014. I was looking for an Emmy, but never mind. <laughs> Okay, so um, what, what, we're going to go one by one, and because you are sitting there, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's right. Short, short yeah, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll be in it. We'll come back to you in a minute. As much as you can. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. What we can use okay. your thing as well while, whilst you're talking comfortably is a chance for people to see how it works mm -hmm. and what goes on. I think a lot of people are sort of like, it's nice, they probably be kind of. <laughs> and if you if you look at me around the camera, okay. get a of flavour. Don't bring that baby blue in your eyes. We'll go yeah. We have got the tinsel behind it. Right, where we were then? Come on. Well, you've done you've done this before. You talked about a lot of curious people. <laughs> How did you get involved in there? What did you think? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they didn't feel the BBC. They felt it. They said to Why were they in Belgium? Ah, for the... Uh, they were there for black balloons. For what? Black balloons. On tape for the records and they're confused. Give me your full name. Right. My name's Cliff Clark. Okay, Cliff, look, tell me what's your personal story? How did you get into... He's smoking, and what difference does it make to you? Um, I was walking around Durham Market one day, and uh, this is uh, probably getting on for five years ago, March will be five years. Uh, I walked into a tobacconist um, is there, and he, he actually had some little cigarettes, e cigarettes, in a package on the counter. I thought, well, that seemed like a good idea. So I got one, tried it, I thought, hmm, not bad. But it was first generation, um, it wasn't that great. 
um, decided to upgrade, which I did, uh, and never looked back. Yes. Uh, Will you just show us what we've got now? Because a lot of people might be unfamiliar with it. Yeah, sure. kind of contraption. Sure, it's, this is uh, the sort of big six feet. That's the chain, sorry. Have you got your device? Have you got two yeah. devices? They look very similar. I don't know what the difference is. Yeah, I've got the same. It's almost like you're talking to somebody in the public that's never come across this kind of thing before, isn't it? This exercise. Are you happy? You are? Yeah, sound yeah. like living. So, Martin, just tell me, what, what is your story of e-smoking, why did you get into it, what kind of difference has it made? Um, basically I saw an advert online um, over a year and a half ago for an instant kit and I have had medical issues, health issues and I thought it's easy. Right. Okay. Yeah, the other way around. I don't know what to say about you, Chris. You're, 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 you're a civilian. <coughs> You've never smoked then? No, never. <coughs> uh, but yet you're, you're a member of this group, yeah. just showing support. Or so, have you become like many of the people here, somebody who recommends it to others? Oh, yes. You become a, a bit of a devotee, you may never try. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tracy, thank you very much. Right, you're responsible. <coughs> Randy. Andy, what, what's your story? Uh, I'm suddenly out of the blue. I'm asking that again. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I think a drop fell down behind <laughs> you. <laughs> you You're alright? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Andy. Yeah, at, at the same time as I was thinking about giving up cigarettes, um, I was involved in another demonstration with motorcycles. And I happened to go on his website and do the film of, of his um, demonstration and he was using this device instead of a cigarette. And he was wounded. He was like, what, what's that? Um, it was a coincidence. Um, so I had a look on the internet um, and found the Trump cigarette. Well, let me have a good look at that. It's like a, it's like a, pipe, a traditional pipe design. It doesn't need to be like that. I've made it like that because it, it feels like that. Yeah. Can you keep it down on the table? Uh, I ended up taking a sign out of the brand. Can you just keep the sign out of the brand? Just quickly. Just quickly. We want to go all the way down the side of the street. And then we need that. Not an airport. Yeah. Not an airport. You need to be a bit of a guy if you're going around. Yeah, I'll fix you. Are you alright? Sorry, it must be hard on you. Are you alright? Are you alright? So, Ron. Tell me why you ended up smoking this device. Well, I mean, I started trying them out five years ago. So it was a waste of And some of them worked, a lot of them did. The fact is, I presumed I was kind of fed up with them. I've been on them now about six months, I think. And I have done a signal cigarette for at least four months. And it was, I'll put them this way, it was a chance my wife said to me, well look, you want to get out and about again, you have a choice. This is every morning when I get up and look at that bird. And there's no state, I don't think there's no state. And so I will progress, I shall continue. I don't want to smoke, but at the same time, I do not want to give up the hand, the or the action of picking up something. You started then experimenting with e-cigs that weren't working particularly well, and now you've got something you're happy with. Can, can you just show for people that don't know this field very much, what have you got? Again, it's a, it's a different shape. Well, it is, I mean, I've only had this one, two, three days now. So Chris, over to you. Right, well, I started by accident really. Um, my daughter had been on a forum and saw a mention, she found a link of this electronic cigarette. And she showed me, I had a look and I thought, oh they are good ones. Go on then, we'll have we'll give it a go for a laugh. 
And that was the expression that was used for a lot. Not for health reasons? No. Not for any no. big plan? No. I didn't have a lot of faith. Mind, on the page I looked, there was no lookalikes as such. There wasn't a cigarette that looked exactly like a cigarette. What did they look like? There were the size of a cigarette, but they were white or black or pink. And I said, we'll order the pink beans. So we had two vivid pink beans. And the first day that they arrived, I noted I'd only smoked five cigarettes. I was so infatuated with this. And how many would you normally have been smoking? 20. And what has the reaction been when you go to a social occasion and do such a distinctive looking device? I suppose I did it on purpose to a big degree. If I go out, I don't go out with the discreet models. I go out with the over the top ones. It's become part of your Are you alright? It's quite hard to do it without being on the tripod like that one and so therefore he's gonna be deserving a pint. Can you just spin that light round so it's on the just the head. Exactly. That's oh, alright. It's fun joy. So will you start, actually, it, it, the smoke, the vapour, should I say, will be caught. Okay, to your shadow in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Will be caught nicely because they've got the light on you. <laughs> like a kind of Marilyn Monroe close-up. So uh, will, you start, will you start by giving us a, a drag? Do you call it a drag? Wow, how did you get into this then? Well, originally, it was two and a half years ago, and it was to stop covering negative as well. Were you a very heavy smoker? Yes. Yeah, I admit to 20 when he's probably more like 30. Up to 40 on the night I absolutely love my cities. Why was he moaning? Well, we were in the military at the time, so every three years we'd move house. So every three years he didn't smoke, so we'd go through that, you're not smoking in the house, you're you're not, you're saying, okay, I'll only smoke downstairs, I'll only smoke in the kitchen, and it, every three years it was. So when we, our last move, I thought, right, I'll shoot. <laughs> and uh, it was my birthday coming up, so a friend of mine had told me about easy. So I said, Well, if you get me one for my birthday, I set up everything to fail. Get me one for my birthday, and then if it doesn't work, it's not mine, I'll make a voice. And it worked. It took about a week, and that was it. These things all work. So that first week, were you? Alternating between yeah. old star tobacco yeah. and the new thing. Yeah. Take us out with a <laughs> take us out with a drag. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking even the 30 day was an underestimate. <laughs> oh, we need to keep a close up. To the, uh, <laughs> Brilliant. Joy, thank you very much. Yeah. Is it camouflage? No, no, out there? You were looking at it and talking about yeah. it? Yeah, no, he said about being the silence and then he said about he dropped it and stuff as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were showing me it looked a yes. bit like a silence. I think it was probably the other way around. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, they put the barrel that way. Yeah, so 180 degrees. Sorry, it's a difficult to explain. But like that way. That That's way. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, why do you think that looks like a silence? Um, because the guys in the camp told me this. Safer6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Hour.
6. Sponsors, Hawthorne Hayes Hour. And we're back in the room. Um, yeah, that was a very interesting afternoon. And what you've seen in roughly 16 minutes took, what, two and a half hours to do, Chris? Two and a half hours, yeah. There were, there were moving cameras, moving lights, making sure everything was lit properly, getting the sound and everything right. And I, and I do, I do apologise for the quality of sound on there, but we, we got what we could get and where the sound went off altogether, and, or not altogether, but where it went really quiet and got covered by hiss, that's kind of where I made the cuts. And I, I knocked that together when I got back. Uh, it was about quarter to seven when I got back in the house, so I've, I've kind of pulled it together from there. But you, you said interesting stuff during the break there. Uh, well, I've just been linking in to chat there, uh, where David Drummond says, "When any of the crew smokers? Because I had the idle thought, uh, uh, had Chris Choi ever smoked? He describes himself as a social smoker. Oh, right. Um, if, and, if and when he gets drunk, apparently, and he's outside having a natter with the other smokers, he'll, um, he'll top pocket one. Right. And, uh, and you know, uh, but he's not, he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't actually class himself as a smoker per se, a social smoker. Um, and when we were, yes, somebody's just said it, Moonlit said it in chat, blags, <laughs> fags, off mates. My favorite <laughs> brand used to be OP. Other people. It was a Keith, yeah. Right. Yes. Right, so the, the, you can only hope then that he has some empathy with the whole thing. Um, it's always going to be a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, you know, as people have so often said, there's no worse than an ex-smoker, especially if they get the bit between their teeth. But he did, he did come across to me today as as though he was really looking for information and he's going to weigh it all up as he goes along. How did you see it, Chris? Um, he asked all the relevant questions. Um, he asked everybody their story and gave them the opportunity to speak freely. Uh, we did explain prior to that interview that we weren't really prepared to talk medical or make medical claims, which we explained to him the reasons why and he did understand. But I think what everybody has to keep in mind, that it, it's Chris's job to ask the questions, but it's not down to him how the final show comes out. That's down to the, the editor and the producer of the show, you know, so... Yes. He's not to blame for whatever happens, whatever the outcome seems to favour. That is not his job. He will, he will have some input to it, but at the end of the day, the director is the one who makes the final decision, yeah. the producer and director between them. Um, but having said that, having spoken to all of the crew during the course of the day, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. As someone else said earlier on in chat, I think it was Mark Shaw. If we get a balanced program, that's actually what we want. And I that's do. I, I, did you pick up as well, Chris, that um, when he was talking about safer and safe enough and completely safe and what have you, he wanted. I know he'd been talking to Gerard Hastings, and, I, and I'm, I've got a good idea what uh, Professor Hastings would have said. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't looking for us to say, look, these are perfectly safe, just that they're safe enough. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have seen that at the top of the video while you were watching. All, all in all, I am I'm, I'm very pleased to dear happened. The only um, downside was we didn't have very many second generation users there. Everybody was using third generation big stuff, so there wasn't that much in the way of uh, egos. And, uh, and that kind of stuff. In fact, I think there was only two Ego batteries between all of us and both of them weren't being used. So it was uh, a bit weird in that respect. But nonetheless... It was, but we did cover that in, in our stories. Um, you know, how we progressed 
So, you know, it is there, but unfortunately when something like this happens on a weekday and in the afternoon, it is just isn't possible for as many people to come along as probably would have liked to. Well, yes, yes, ab absolutely right, Chris. Um, I've got to say a great big thank you to everybody that did actually turn up, um, considering it was a fairly doer Thursday. It, right at the arse end of November, just before everybody's getting that X word, you know? <laughs> mm. Uh-huh. The one we're not allowed to say. No, not this month. Next month. Next month. Um, we had to take tinsel down. I didn't show that on the film. Had to take tinsel down. Because <coughs> the show's going out on January the 16th, after the X word, um, at 7.30. It's a Thursday, so you can watch that and then watch the Here's Hour. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it, yeah, all, all told, I think it was uh, a damned good couple of days spent, and I know he's got a lot more people to talk to, and I believe he's going to be interviewing Linda McEvan, and if he gives Linda McEvan the ride I got last night, that's going to be worth watching, wouldn't you say, Chris? <laughs> well, if he put politicians questions to you last night then he has to sort of put the vapor side to Linda McCavan mm -hmm. right that's the way I'm looking at it uh, and that can't be a bad thing because she's refused to listen to us so maybe she'll listen to our words through him one, one would certainly hope so, yes. And uh, there, is, there is much mention of uncut <coughs> versions of all kinds of things. You never know. You see, what is, is we're saying while, while it was on, what you don't realise until, uh, you know, you might be part of, the, of, of this television thing, is, as Chris mentioned earlier, the, the influence of editing. I mean, you blindly sit and watch a documentary on television and... In, in, in the past of just taking it all, oh yeah, you know, that's, that's the situation, that, that, that was very good. Mm. And you don't realise that it's all bits stuck together uh, that, that can come over quite differently to what you expect it to. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely uh, right, absolutely right. Um, I think uh, as well, it, ask anybody that was there this afternoon, two and a half hours to do what we did. There, wa there wasn't much in the way of technical glitches and stuff like that, and we don't know how much it's going to end up. It certainly won't be five minutes during the course of a half-hour show, um, but it will be interesting to see how all of that pans out. Shall we move on a little, or is anything? Is anybody coming up with anything in chat that we need to handle? I mean, I was trying to compare that with the mm. snippet on the North East News of, mm. that, of that thing we did at Shields. Yes. I, I mean... That, that was disappointing, wasn't it, really? It was, very much so, very much so. And Jemima Joyce just said there in chat, and there was still so much we could have told him that we didn't have time for. They were on a tight schedule. Um, but again, as I say, a big thank you to everybody involved. You all know who you are. I think you're all sitting watching in chat. It was great to see everybody there. Um, and it was actually a really <coughs> lovely afternoon. It was, wasn't it? I mean, it was cracking <coughs> meat. It, it was a cracking me, just sat round a round table, <laughs> flapping our jaws before and after. And and I'm I'm also going to say, if you ever go to South Shields, for whatever reason, whenever, please do go to the New Crown Inn. Um, they could <laughs> not have been more helpful. They were absolutely fabulous and really, really did us proud. Would you agree, Chris? Oh, totally. It's, it, it's Vapors <laughs> had pride of place. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, she's not wrong because the little corner where we usually go, well, it's not that little, take about 70 people, <clears throat> that didn't suit. So we went right into the very centre of the bar and took a table there. This was, I mean, Chris and, and uh, his producer, Sam, went and asked if that was... Yeah, no problem at all. Wherever you like, there was lights. It was it was just just fabulous. The new Crown Inn, if you're watching, a big, 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 big thumbs up to you. I'll definitely be back. And I think we'll be having more knees mates there as well, will we not, Chris? Yeah, 
Oh, absolutely. Brilliant. Absolutely. Brilliant. If you ever get the chance to go, go. It's definitely worth it. Um, right, look, tell you what, we'll take a quick blast of adverts and then we'll have a look at this, uh, this technique for recoiling and re-wicking a K-fun that I learned while I was in Ireland. It's not going to be the tri-coil, tri-crow coil tonight, folks, because my hands are just too shaky. I'll cover that in another show, but I'll show, I'll, cause I, I'll tell you after the adverts. I've fallen over my words tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's your yeah, name yeah. again? Fred. Uh, Begin, yes, begins with a K. Uh, K? Kellogg's. K-Fun. K-Fun. No, 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 it's Keith. It's Keith. Oh, it's a, Keith, no, I no. remember now. <laughs> right, we'll be back in two ticks. It's an age thing. Pardon? Uh, you, did you say... An age you? thing. I'm sorry, I can't... A age thing. Right, all right, fine, fine <coughs> enough. Back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Oops, I guess, who, <laughs> I guess who forgot to press the button. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, let's go to Closey Up Calm Immediate Lamont, and you will see what we're talking about. This is a K-Fun 3.1, um, an, an FT version. Um, and what I've done, what I've done here on the coil, he said, getting out a, is to wind the coil in two and a 0.25 mil canthal. There's 10 turns on there. And then fastened it all in, get that little bit of crud off. Um, and then what you do is, is, is actually quite simple. This is kind of one I made earlier, the Blue Peter version thereof. So if I just take it off my little stand and clag it onto an EVIC, like so, and turn it sideways, you'll be able to see that that coil is, is semi micro coiled you should also be able to see i think that it's not touching the bed where the terminals are and what you need to do is first to switch on your evic which it is and it's detecting 2.9 ohms and then give it a hoop get it going and when it glows take your finger off and pinch it gently and you keep on doing this until you see the image beginning to drop. And what you're trying to do, and it is only gently mind, what you're trying to do is to drop the resistance down a little. You want to compact the coils if you can. And you can see it's straightforward, a little bit time consuming, but straightforward nonetheless. Tension the coils gently together. Until it gets to the point where you want it. 
and that's now steady at around about 2.9. I'd like it down a little bit further but I'm not going to worry about it. And then, this is where I can burn my fingers if I'm not careful, then you need to look at wicking it and I'm going to use, lost me stand, there it is, I'm going to use a little bit of cutting well which is cleading posh, cleed it, cleed on up in the northeast. It's posh for cotton wool. Talking about posh, Chris, did you see the comments about your uh, your vocalizations in chat during I the course? I haven't of that? got a posh voice. You went all <coughs> sultry and sexy while you were talking. No, I didn't. Yes, I mean, you did. I did not. Yes, you did. Right. So, what one needs to do is to get a bit of cutting well doesn't take much and you just need to cut yourself a bit off and the idea is that it's just going to go through the center of there so there's way too much cotton wool here so all I'm going to do is just split it down the center and then very very gently just roll it I don't want a tight and I want a little point at either end so that I can just see a little bit tighter than that try the other end then just roll it gently get a little point so that it will go through and that means you can now pull it through go sideways and you can see and you're trying not to make too tight a a coil out of this and it doesn't need to go much further than that on this K phone all I need to do is cut it off level with the bed that coils very similar to uh, what was in the first light bulb isn't it it is uh, it is it is very very similar very very similar and again cut it off level with the bed it doesn't need to be long and going down any channels or anything like that so as you can probably see that's it now in place and just a little bit of a, a tug and a fluff <laughs> tug and a, easy enough chris i could even do that because i could see that one yep it's the little uh, ones i can't three mil and then i'm just gonna make sure that the chimney bit will fit on which it does and then pull out the piece of crap that I'd left in from earlier on and all I really need to do now is put some juice on it now this is cutting well you cannot allow it to dry out so we'll clag a little bit of juice on and then is this boring you yet Keith? no no I... and then I'm going to stick it on the Evic just to power it up with the little chimbley in place anybody in chat that knows better than me on how to do this by all means shout up so this is going to be running at about 7 watts and let's just give it a blast and you can see just at 7 watts that thing is starting to kick it out there you go mm. and you oh. will see as well that you do because it's cutting well need to keep it good and damp now Back to non close you up you come. Work you swing. Oh, down. D D D D D. I love it when stuff comes together. Right. Back to non close you up you come. Now I do not profess to know me way around this, and I, but I will confess this was a present from Cliff today because he can't get away with it. It's too fiddly for him. So he said, "There you are. See if you can make any use of that." And I'm gonna. And I haven't yet worked out how to fill these things properly so I'm not even going to try what I am going to do is put it together ah it's cross threaded that what would happen if the cotton wool did dry out would you, you would have to get, start again or you'd get a mouthful of very nasty smoke it would burn the cutting wool and you don't really want to be doing that and just screw the tank back together I'm going to fill it from the top I know there's a proper way to do it and I know Bob Old Git knows the proper way to do it but I don't I'm going to have to uh, check it all out and get used to it first. So we'll put the, the top on and then I'm going to fill it with juice. 
because I can put just enough in and stick the lid on uh, it's a good idea if you're doing this on a bottom button mod not to <laughs> otherwise you might find yourself getting burned two bits and I'm sure that would not be good right I'll just tighten all that up fingers are all greasy as a greasy thing um, sorry for not having recorded this earlier and I'll just give it a blast on the, uh, the EVIC at 7 watts so it's brand new and we'll see how it runs and it's showing me exactly where I want it so that's all good That appears to be working quite well, nicely. Do you want to have a blast? Producing, isn't it? Mm, isn't it just? Mm. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing the job? Mm. Ah, a bit of cotton wool. Bit of cotton wool. Who'd have thunk it, eh? And not very much cotton wool at that. Easy as pie, really. You no, know, the cotton wool bit, I think even I could do. Yep, absolutely right. <coughs> so that, that was that was what I learned in Ireland. Um, none of this torch and everything and messing about. You use the heat in the coil to pull it all together. It can take a while. Um, and I'll again I'll be freely open and transparent and honest about it I did give it about 10 pulses before the show to make sure it was going to work um, where are we at what what is yes if it tastes like cotton says Steffi it's too much cotton that's true you don't need to use a lot and you don't want it tight cotton wool is amazingly absorbent they use it yeah. in ladies products don't they Chris oh yeah yes yes the kind of ladies' products that absorb an awful lot. Isn't no, that right, yeah. Chris? Yes. An unfortunate comparison. I would have thought you could have found another one, but that's by the by. <laughs> no, that's typical, Dave. It is, isn't it? Uh, I'm only reminded because while I sat down to have me... Why do they always put adverts for those ladies' products on at tea time? Why? Just why? When you're eating. Especially, that's one of the reasons I don't like liver. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, it's, giving, it's giving chat something to chat about. Gary didn't <laughs> say... Oh, no, no. Um, I, yes, I, I made sure that the cutting will, what I have used, is bleach-free. It's, it's, uh, it's fine. And actually, the flavour is flooding out of this. It's really rather nice. I'll go to I'll go to Keith Cam. So I'm gonna wait you out now. They'll not be able to see you. Right, it. right. <laughs> way, <laughs> way. <laughs> it's cracking. This is really nice. Um, yeah, as Mark Shaw has said in chat, you can boil whatever cotton wool you have to hand. I will say having had to do this before, that if you boil it in a sieve in the pan, right. that way it all stays inside the sieve, and then when it dries out, you can fluff it up and just get as much as you need, then I would strongly suggest Ziploc bags, and that keeps them dry and as, as sterile as they were when they went in. Alternatively, cotton balls if you use cotton balls they stay together and you can you can uh, sort them out around that way but it's very very easy to do i had not tried a cotton wick until i went across to ireland uh I'm, what i'm going to do is stick it on something a little more capable than the evic for power so i mean why why do you think I was going to say, why do you think that's cottoned on in Ireland? But, 
uh, uh, I mean, why? Is this some sort of tradition? or? No, I think uh, there's a lot of people have been uh, messing about with cotton wicks. This is now set to uh, 14 watts. Right. So yeah. that'll be interesting. Would have been better if that had stayed on camera. I'll try again. Keith, you want to try that, mate? 14 watts. That flavour is fabulous. Um, ladies and gentlemen, oh, watching, on, nice. watching on video on demand, I am not going to read out what Moonlit has just suggested, but you might imagine that when I mentioned Lady Products, a particular cylindrical oh. one had come up. He's suggesting wrapping one with Canthal ribbon and then hook the Canthal up to a car battery or another high wattage source. When you what think... What size atomizer is going to fit that? <laughs> An one? exhaust pipe? Yes. I mean, when you think of the thousands of users for cotton wool, particularly in the health industry, why pick on that? Don't go making health claims now. No health claims, Keith. Oh. You're no. enjoying that, uh, aren't you? I am, yeah. It, uh, mm. A soothing sort of flavour coming out of that. Well, that, that's really nice to hear. Chris, you haven't got a staple gun handy, have you? <laughs> a staple gun. Oh, I have noticed your bloody top pockets on. Oh, no, that would be obvious if I put that in there, wouldn't it? Just a bit. No, it won't fit, Keith. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, Famago has pointed. Oh, God. <laughs> Lena Marie Popatorsen. No, yeah. no. Uh, Famago's pointed out it is important to check for contaminants, as in, in, in insecticides used while growing the cotton it is it's a good idea to boil it it absolutely is you want to uh, you want to make sure that the cotton that you use in the wick is as clean as you can possibly get it i have to say um i'm really impressed by this cotton wick malarkey i'll be even more impressed with this uh Kfun clone when i get it when i get worked out how you fill it without taking the top off but that said I'm not that bothered if I'm to be I'm going to change the airflow though because it's got an airflow just well, on know, the side. Just thinking about it, you you would have a, a ample access to supplies of cotton buds. Cotton buds? Yes. What, you mean being Your married? grandson. My grandson doesn't vape. He's not one yet, man. No. Cotton buds and babies go together, is what Keith is saying. You would have thought he would have uh, thought that, wouldn't you? Thought he would have cottoned mm -hmm. on to that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why would I know, Keith? Well, babies, cotton buds. Yeah, what, what do you use the cotton, wood, cotton buds for? Well, for all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Cleaning and drying. Cleaning, and drying. All sorts of things. Mm. Application. Uh, that Yes, that's application, yes. You know, dabbing things on the baby. <laughs> Anyhow. Oh, it's disappeared from view again. Yes, well, probably just as well. Yeah, it's not a bad thing, is it? It isn't, no. Well, while he's gone, can I just make an announcement there? Um, for anybody that's in the Wolverhampton area, Wolverhampton. please pay attention. Please pay attention if you're in the Wolverhampton area. Chris is about to speak. Listen to what she says now. I'll give him. Somebody <laughs> put a tampon in his mouth or something. <laughs> I was going to say something there, but I bit my tongue. <laughs> I've got, I've got some I cotton wool if it's bleeding. You know what I was going to say, don't you? No. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> On Monday, the 2nd of December, 
at Wolverhampton Civic Centre. Wolverhampton oh. Civic Centre. Which is right in the centre of the of Wolverhampton, surprisingly enough. From 10 a.m. onwards, there's going to be a protest. All right, let's be heard. Let's show them we have a voice. And for more information, go on to the Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com backslash midlands.vaping. So if you're in Wolverhampton and you can be there on Monday the 2nd of December at 10 a.m., get down there. There you go. Have you done, Dave? Have you done? You see, I always think your voice sounds good, uh, Chris. I, I don't see these distinctions. It's always, uh, you know, comes across articulately and uh, doesn't it? You know, this posh voice business. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't posh, it wasn't posh. It posh. wasn't a posh voice. It went from her usual dawn that I get to this Oh no, oh no! My, well, my well, does that not send a message to you? Because my mm. my daughter and I were looking at this website, oh, sure. and as we were so, it has its charms, you know. And as we were looking at this website, Chris, <laughs> oh, we noticed sure. that there were no cigar likes on there. Oh no! <laughs> we went for pink ones. Shut up, daughter! They were gorgeous. <laughs> Stick a cotton wool pod in your mouth and be quiet. I'll give him an injection. <laughs> Not the kind you had on Tuesday, I hope. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, quite, yes. Um. <laughs> oh, dear me. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, <laughs> if we've caused any offence tonight, I couldn't give a toss. <laughs> I do apologise. Hey, it's been it's been a busy week. It's been a Cliffy, watch it, pet. Watch it. Or I'll come down here and I'll bet you I will. Cliffy, Cliffy's got a J J. <laughs> I just can't understand how a program like this develops into a sort of um sordid medical thing. And that's you, you know. It's not got nothing to do with me. It's got, got everything to do, to do with you. you. It's got nothing to do with me at all. No, definitely not. Now, Cliffy was there. He didn't have a GG, but he's had a look at the new ones, the Just GG, and he's pronounced it nicer, but it's got these too many rings in it. And uh, there you go. Now, Cliffy's... He, uh, to be fair, Cliff was there first. He was, uh, um, he was there from 12 o'clock. Cliff is a good lad. Cliff, I owe you one, mate. I, I really do like that. And I shall, uh, I shall find out how to use it properly. I'll do you proud, bunny lad. I certainly will. I need to say a big, 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 big thank you to everybody uh, tonight. To Keith for coming round and, and, you know, keeping me half sane. And to Chris for coming online and keeping the other half sane. Um, thank you both, uh, for without you I would have been lost tonight. Uh, a big, big thank you as well to the rest of the VTTV team for doing what they do, and they do it so well. They make you proud to be part of the team, and I am. See this chest getting pushed out with pride? That's why. I thought why. that was your belly again. Oh, will you stop it? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and I'm going to say as well, thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you to the vapors that came along this afternoon and showed what real people do. I'm so proud to be part of this vaping community of ours. I really am. You make this happy man feel very old. No, you <laughs> make this old man <laughs> feel very happy. You're all stars and I'm proud to be one of you. Um, until, well, in, in a few Gee minutes, whiz. Faith and Daz is going to be going live on our i 4 radio. Get across there, enjoy what he does, because he does it so well. Um, Sunday, uh, Friday night, uh, I'm going to get this right. If, if I knew us. what button to press, Chris, I'd, uh, I'd cut him off. <laughs> oh, no. Thank you. 
Friday <laughs> night, it's the lock in with Tim. Saturday night's date night. Get your leg over and have a steak. Steak and blowjob night on Saturday night is what it is. Sunday night is Dave's tackle box, which will be brill. Tim, your tip on Monday, which will be. That'll be the 2nd of December, won't it? Monday, yes. Yes. 2nd of December. That'll be the 2nd of December. Uh, and I think. Is Gary doing the raffle then? Or is that the night? Yes. No, he's um, doing the, the raffle on the 2nd of December. 2nd of I December. Think. Gary's doing the raffle. The, the children, said, yes. chil children in need raffle. Um, and that'll, yes. So tune in for that. Tuesday, we've got Marco Van Basten and then the Germans will be on after Marco. And then Wednesday night, it's VT Talk. How the hell am I going to follow last night's VT Talk? I don't know, <laughs> but we'll try. And then it rolls round to the here's hour. I might be sober. On the other hand, there's four fingers and a thumb. There you go. That was the show. Good night, Dave. Well, I'll say good good night, Dave. Thanks everybody for watching. See you good all night. next time. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.